Hello and welcome to my channel, Chefing with Sean. I'm Sean and today's subject matter is my Black Book series. We're covering a chapter on one of my favorite styles of passive fermentation, sauerkraut. Today's recipe is turnip green sauerkraut. This recipe isn't like anything you grew up with as a child and it's not like the thing you can find at your favorite hot dog vendor. This recipe is crisp and clean. This recipe is bold, it's tart, it's spicy, it's aromatic, and it is a real pleasure to eat. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. For today's recipe, you will need one teaspoon of dried jalapeno seeds, one whole star anise, one tablespoon of whole toasted peppercorns, a black cardamom pod, two tablespoons of fresh ground turmeric, one teaspoon pink Himalayan sea salt, a quarter cup kosher salt, a quarter cup toasted caraway seeds, five sprouted garlic cloves, half of a red onion, half of a cup of mustard stems I had left over from another project, two pounds of turnip greens, and one whole green cabbage. The very first step in making sauerkraut is to lay out all of your ingredients so that the salt can pull the moisture out of them and so that the aromatics have time to release oils onto each other. In a more traditional style recipe, they would cut everything into strips to increase the access for the salt to the cell walls of the vegetables. I'm not doing this, but I'm doing this very intentionally so that my product stays firmer, it is slightly less tart, and it's more usable in a larger variety of instances as a more whole product. We're going to leave our product to sit overnight so that the salt can do its work. This is going to be significantly less moisture pull than you would if you were using the traditional method. And this is okay. Matter of fact, it's kind of what we're looking for. Over time, I've learned to use a closed fermentation system for these kinds of products. First, let me give you the what, and then I'll give you the why. The what. A one gallon amber tinted mason jar with a reusable metal lid with removable gasket fittings and a bell style airlock. The why. Mason jars are easy to find and they're very inexpensive. They are standardized and come in a thousand and one different varieties so you can customize it to fit your setup. They're glass so they don't corrode or leach off flavors. They're pressure safe. The specific variety I'm using is amber tinted to help with light contamination. I also chose a lid that was metal with removable gaskets so I could wash it later. The airlock is a bell shape because that's the easiest and most foolproof style of airlock to use. One way out, one way in, and you can adjust it to maintain your setup. As you start putting the ingredients from the night before into your fermentation vessel, we're looking for even consistent layers. I'm using a cool tool referred to as long plating tweezers. They're about 14 inches, made by a company called Wustoff. It's one of my favorite toys to play with, but not super necessary because no matter what happens, when we get towards the end, you're going to hard pack it. I'm also adding in a little bit of the leftover liquid and some water. The water is not necessary at all, but it will help to jumpstart this fermentation process. 
were overpacking and don't worry it's safe these mason jars are pressure safe that's one of the reasons we chose them but we're overpacking so that we can maximize the surface contact area with all of your ingredients so that you can have better leaching with the salt and also a better enzymatic reaction in your product and then a nice turn to let out some of those air bubbles that might have been trapped in there and then one last little hard tamp at the end to make sure everything's all set as you're going into the last little part of your setup here it's important to check the threads to make sure that you get a tight seal that there's no ingredients in the way uh, like leftover caraway seeds also that we're using a neutral grain spirit in our airlock sometimes you get a little bit of a suction or a bubble effect sucks a little bit of that liquid in there that's not necessarily a bad thing it's just something that you have to be aware of if you had something with a flavor it would add sugar and it would adversely affect your entire fermentation flavor as it goes through. With a neutral grain spirit, you don't have to worry about that. Most of the time, they really don't affect anything. After you slap a label on your new project, you wanna find a great place to store it. For me, that's the top of my fridge. It has low amounts of natural lighting. It is a consistent temperature that doesn't get very hot. It seems to work the best for me. Hey y'all, thought this was a good segment? Hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel or follow us on Instagram. Thank you for viewing. I would love to hear any comments that you have down below. And tune in next week for the next one. Bye-bye.